Hello and welcome to another game programming tutorial. In this tutorial, we will going to learn how you can make the two objects collide and you can make the colliding object disappear on a sound with particle system effect and also to be able to have something fall towards gravity. In order to work with this project, these are the items that I brought on my plane. So I started a new Unity project. Then from the game object, from the 3D object, I brought a plane and I brought two cubes. Besides that, I also bought, brought, bought, brought from the audio and audio source. And I brought a particle system. And here you can see the list of the items. I called my first cube, cube 1, which is this bottom cube, to which I applied one of the surfaces. Then I called my cube 2, cube 2, and this is how you can rename them from the inspector. So I called my cube 2, cube 2, and then applied this wood surface material to this cube 2. And then I applied the spaceship material to the plane. Besides that, I brought in a sound which I grabbed from the following page, soundbible.com slash tags hyphen crash dot html. So that's where I downloaded my sound. And then I wrote a script on the cube too. There are a few other items that I set on each one of the objects that I brought in. To the audio source, I tied it to the audio source that I brought in from that website that I shared with you. So here in the inspector you can see under audio clip that you simply click here and you choose the audio source from your asset. Besides that, you have to make sure that play on awake is unchecked. Otherwise, we're going to start playing automatically. We generally do that if we want to play a background music on a game. So we'll want to have that start on awake. Otherwise, you don't want to do it. Besides that, what we did was we brought in a particle system. The particle system gives you this effect that you are seeing right now here. And to bring in, you go under game object and you bring in a particle system. There are certain properties that you need to set for a particle system in order for this effect, what we are trying to do here. You need to uncheck the looping so it just doesn't automatically keep working. Second of all, uh, you can uncheck play on awake. Thirdly, you can choose your colors. So what I did, first of all, from start color drop down menu, I chose gradient instead of one solid color, I chose gradient. Either way, you get this, when you click on the color, you get this color blend bar, and you can choose one color from down below here, and when you click on it, it gives you an option to choose a color. And then you can click on the other one, and then you can choose a different color, whatever color you like. It basically allows you to blend the two colors and you can control them however far you want them. Wherever you want one to start blending into the other is basically what we're doing. So we can actually take this and say I want less of a blue and more of a red. So this, you can control all of that with this bar. Once you set your colors, you can simulate to see how this will happen. What else I did when I placed my particle system, I moved it around so that it's actually being placed between the two of them. I can actually push it, move it wherever I want to move it so that it starts out from that location. So I can do a simulation and it actually starts out right from there. So anyway, once I set up this basic environment, I went to my cube, which is my falling cube, and I went under add component, physics, and I add the rigid body. So now, when I add the rigid body, in the rigid body, I check the use gravity so that this will actually make the object fall. So under add component, under physics, the rigid body is placed right here. So from when the rigid body was added, I checked use gravity and is kinematic will be unchecked for this object. Then to this, I went under add component, new script, and I added a C sharp script. The C-sharp script is this collision script, which will be added to your asset, will be added over here. And then I'm going to share with you the script and some of the other things that are part of the script details. Then I clicked on the plane, and I also promoted my plane to be a rigid body, but I'm not using gravity. I don't want my plane to fall towards gravity. Rather, I want it to stay. So that's why I unchecked use gravity, but I use a schematic. So this is how I basically set up my environment for this game. 
Once I set up the environment for this game, you can certainly move your camera around however you want your game to happen. So after this, I went to my source code behind the scene and there are certain pieces of code that I will going to uncomment and then comment back so that you can see how things are running. Here in the public audio source collision sound, that's one object which will allow my script to be tied to the sound and particle system object which would allow my script to be tied to a particle system object. Once you declare these two public objects, then inside the Unity, if you are on cube number two, in the script portion, you're going to get these two objects to be tied. So one will be tied to the audio source object, the other one will going to be tied to the particle system object. Once you tie that, now let's come back here. We have a function, a built-in function called onCollisionEnter. And onCollisionEnter, you automatically receive a parameter of collision type and the name of this is collision. You can call it anything you like. I left it to its default. This actually holds the reference to the object to which your current object on which you have written the script is colliding with. So this holds the reference of the colliding of the, the, the object with which your current object is colliding. So what I'm doing is when the collision happens, I, I'm start playing, I would like to start playing the sound which is tied to the audio source and I want to start my particle system effect and then I want to destroy the falling object which a game object basically refers automatically to the object on which you are writing the script. So now if I switch over to my Unity and I go into my game, design, game engine, you notice that it falls. If I turn on my speaker so that you can also hear the smashing sound, so on collision, it actually vanishes, destroys, and after that this particle system generates this effect. So that is one thing that I wanted to introduce mainly in this tutorial that how you can make an object to fall towards gravity on another object and when it falls I wanted to generate a sound I wanted to apply a particle system and I wanted to destroy the falling object. Besides that there are a few more properties that you can read about these falling objects. For example, let me comment the destroy and let me uncomment these lines that I've commented right here. And now, after this, I will explain this to you what it means and then show you to you what it does. Whenever a collision happens between two objects, the game object is the reference of the object on which you are writing the script. And collision is the reference to an object with which the game object is colliding with. So game object dot name will tell you the name of the game object and the collision dot collider dot name will tell you the name of the object with which your game object is colliding with. Then there are collision dot context dot length will going to give you points of contact of collision and the relative velocity of collision will tell you the relative velocity of collision. So these are some of the properties that you can pull. Besides that, while the collision is taking place between the two objects, you can also use on collision stay. And an on collision stay, you can say, well, the following two objects are still colliding. In order for this to, to actually be seen in the console, I've, I've commented the destruction line. Otherwise, if the object get destroyed, then none of this can be seen. So now let me try this in the game game engine and as they collide everything happens but except for the destruction now let's check the console in the console you will notice that it says the following two objects are still colliding still colliding still colliding and it's just ongoing stuff that is it just says just keeps running keeps running keeps running this is what basically it does as long as they're colliding it keeps running so now let me come in this you can also use a keyboard shortcut which is for commenting control KC you press and hold the control while you first press K then you release K and then you press C and you have to press and hold the control for the whole time and to uncomment you do control KU.
So since, since I want to comment, control KC comments it, control KU uncomments it. Okay. Now I would also like to now run it again to see only what happens when the collision happens. I need to save my script, which I didn't do. Now let's try again. Let me clear it. And now let's try it. So now you can see that it says the detection of the collision happened between cube 2 and cube 1. There are four points of contact and the relative velocity was this of x, y, and z. Since this happens on y-axis, therefore it says that only the y velocity was there, but there was no x or no z velocity. So that's how you can be reading some of the properties in collision. So let's switch back to the source code. Again, we will going to comment these two line these few lines, control KC, and we will going to uncomment this line, control KU, and let's run it one last time to see that it's working exactly the way we created it. And here you go, that on collision it destroys, sound gets produced, and a particle system comes into effect. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial. Catch you in the next one.